Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to a very special video. Recently you may have noticed that the channel has hit 3,000 subscribers, so thank you so much to everybody who has recently subscribed, and everyone who continues to watch and enjoy the videos that I make. I know it feels like I say that at the beginning of every one of these sort of milestone videos, but yeah, it really does mean a lot, so thank you. Um, for a while now you guys have been asking me to make a loco collection video where I show you every loco that I own. And uh, as you may have guessed, that's what we're doing today. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got quite a lot to get through. Most of it you haven't seen before. So uh, yeah, let's get straight to it. And where better to start than at the very beginning? My first engine was a Thomas I got for Christmas as part of a starter set. And I'm pleased to say that he still runs to this day. That same Christmas, my granddad also gave me one of his locos, which is this really nice little red LMS tank engine. And then naturally being a Thomas fan, I also wanted a Percy, so I remember saving up to buy this engine. There are a couple of other engines that got passed down to me as well that I'm not entirely sure where they came from. First of all, this Class 08 was always a favourite of mine. It makes a lot of noise, but it's actually a really good runner. In contrast, there was then also this little 0402, which sadly was just dead on arrival when it was given to me. That said, lately I have tried to get it going again and I've had a little bit of success there. Speaking of 040s, I also had the classic Smokey Joe, and this was a favourite of mine mostly because it shared the same name as me. And then here we have the L&Y Pug. Sadly this doesn't run at the moment, it's missing a buffer and then also one of the screws on the wheels has sheared off, so it needs a bit of work doing to it and some spares before it'll see action again. I also have a few of the Hornby Collectors Club Locos too. This one was a Virgin Class 04 they did, which I think was actually rather quite good. And then there was also this Southern 040, which from what I remember was a real pocket rocket. I also rejoined the Hornby Club a couple of years ago, specifically to get the exclusive H Class, which you'll see a bit later on. At the same time though, they also sent me the 2019 Loco, which was this railroad bagnell in the striking network rail yellow livery. Speaking of more modern stuff, here is an HST in the old GNER livery. I remember being really excited about getting this train pack because it had lights in it. I also have this Network Southeast train too. I grew up seeing these kinds of trains at my local station and actually seeing it now, it does make me want to kind of build a simple layout for it someday. My first big tender engine though was this Castle class, uh, Winchester Castle to be exact, which came as part of a pack with three coaches. And then having grown up with Harry Potter, it was only natural that I would end up with a Hogwarts Castle engine at some point as well. Next up is this old Flying Scotsman model that I got second hand in a model shop years and years ago. And then I have a few more locos that used to belong to my granddad. The most impressive one was Duke of Sutherland, which I believe is the only tender drive loco in my entire collection. Next up is this tank engine that I think is meant to be a Jinty. The interesting thing about this though is that it actually has a smoke element inside that amazingly still works to a certain extent. One of the most unusual locos I own though is this bright blue class 33. This is another one that was completely dead originally but again I have been able to sort of bring it back to life a little bit. Finally the last of my granddad's locos is this DMU in BR Green. The new Backman DMUs naturally blow this out of the water but I still think this one has a certain charm. Moving into the more modern stuff now, I have this Backman Standard Class 4 MT tank engine. Annoyingly, when I got it though, it was missing a buffer and I've never been able to get hold of a replacement for it. By now, you may know that I love the J94s slash austerities, and I actually own not one, but four of these. These brilliant locos are superb runners, and they used to be really cheap too. I mean, I think some of these I got for £35 brand new. From small industrial locos to big mainline steam engines now, here is my live steam Mallard. It's become a firm favourite on the channel and it's easily the most unique loco in my collection. Sticking with the LNER, here we have the Flying Scotsman in its preserved apple green livery. I got this shortly after seeing the real Flying Scotsman at York in 2004 and this was the first super detailed engine I ever owned. Next up is my schools class and this one is number 907 Dulwich. Again, a really nice super detailed loco and a great runner too. One loco you haven't seen before on my channel is the Thompson B1. This is a really nice loco and one I'm certainly looking forward to running a bit more when my layout is complete. 
Up next is another tender engine you haven't seen on my channel before. It's the Backman H2 Beachy Head. And I believe there's actually a new build of this loco currently underway at the Bluebell Railway. Another LNER loco now is the J36. This is a really high quality model in my opinion, and so like the Hornby J15, which is also an 060 tender engine, it has lots of detail and is a great slow runner. Speaking of the Hornby J15, this is definitely up there as one of my favorite models. On the surface, it's nothing special, but there's something so charming about a small tender engine like this. As I've mentioned before, it's a really good smooth runner, and the slow speed is absolutely incredible. Moving on, we have the Backman J72, or rather the E1 in this livery. The lined green is actually a fictitious livery, as I believe they were only painted in black in actual service, but since my layout is a heritage railway, I think we can bend the truth a little bit. Another Backman 060 now, although this one is a few years older, it's the Midland 1F. I was originally planning to get a Jinty, but I saw these were discounted, so I got one of these instead, and I'm actually really happy with it. One engine that occasionally is a bit of a problem is the Hornby Sentinel. When it works, it's really good and is a nice smooth runner, but every so often it just decides it doesn't want to play ball for whatever reason, so that can be a bit frustrating. The Ruston 48DS is another small diesel from Hornby, but in complete contrast, this is a very consistent runner, and I still get a little bit excited whenever I have this loco on the layout. Earlier on, I mentioned I joined the Hornby Club a few years ago to get their exclusive model, which was this, the SECR H-Class. And this is actually a model of the preserved loco that works at the Bluebell Railway. Another SECR loco I own is the Hatton's P-Class. And as you may remember from my recent review, I was really impressed with not only the decoration on this engine, but also how controllable it is too. Moving back to Hornby now, it's the Terrier. And you may remember mine is the A1 Stepney. It was great to see Hornby update this loco from their old tooling as they're such charming tank engines and they seem to have been a really popular release. Another tank engine I own is the B2 Peckett. Mine is in the NCB blue livery and I have to admit part of the reason I went for this one was because I don't have many blue locos. And of course here is the W4 Peckett. If you've seen any of my videos then you'll know I love this engine. Again these were a huge success for Hornby and really kickstarted the whole small industrial loco craze. And finally we get to Rocket, one of the engines that started it all. Hornby released their updated models of these last year and I was really impressed with it. Again it seems these were a success for Hornby as they've now started expanding the range. And so, assuming I haven't forgotten anything, that is my entire OO Gauge Loco collection. I have done reviews on some of these Locos, but do let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to do a video on one that I haven't yet covered. In the meantime, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications when a new video is released. For now though, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!